Hi, my name is Dominic, and today we're going to continue to look at the name Emmanuel. But let's start with Proverbs 30, verses 1 through 5. Proverbs 30, verse 1. The words of Agur, the son of Jacob, even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ethiel, even unto Ethiel and Eucal. Surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. I neither learned wisdom, nor have the knowledge of the holy. Who hath ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name? If thou canst tell, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And so in Proverbs 30, we have a challenge. And the challenge is what is the name of our father and what is the name of his son? Today, we're going to be looking at the name of his son. And lucky for us, there's a clue right there in verse 1. It says, The man spake the prophecy unto Ethiel, even unto Ethiel. And you call the word Ethiel is there twice, probably for a reason. It is a clue. When we look up the word Ethiel, we find that it says, God is with us. And sure enough, one of the names of the Messiah that we have in the Bible is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Now, let us continue to read the proverb. It says, Surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. So the Father is telling us here that if we have no understanding, we are nothing but brutes. We are no more than brutes because we need to have understanding. We need to understand our Father, understand the world that we live in, understand the nation Israel that we are from, and understand the plans that the Father have for us today moving forward. Um, verse 3, I neither learned wisdom nor have knowledge of the holy. Well, if we have understanding, then we can begin to learn wisdom. And once we can learn a little bit, we can hope to have knowledge of things that are holy. We can know um, what things are close to our Father and what things he wants far away from him. And if we go to verse 5, it says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And so the challenge in the proverb is, what is the name of the Father and the name of the Son? Verse 5 tells us that the word of God, that is the Holy Scriptures, that is the word of our Father that came unto the prophets, those words are pure. And so, if we can look at the Holy Scriptures, if we can, we can consult the Bible, we can hope to gain understanding, to learn wisdom, and to learn knowledge of the Holy. Now... How do we gain understanding? Let's go to Luke 16, verse 29 through 31. Um, there was a certain rich man who died, and while he was burning where he was at, he called unto Abraham. He called unto Father Abraham, asking him, how can he save his brothers from falling into the same pit that he is in. How can he save his brothers who are still alive from burning the way he is burning? 
And so he asked Abraham, let's read what Abraham said. Luke 16 verse 29 reads, Abraham saith unto him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Abraham said, We should hear Moses and the prophets. If you want wisdom and understanding, if you want to be included in the father's plans for his kingdom then you should consult Moses and the prophets and there is nobody else that can help you there is nobody else that if you listen to that person you will be saved you have to go to Moses and the prophets because that is who the word of God came into came unto the word of our father came unto now, what can the prophets tell us about the name of the Son? What does the name of the Messiah mean? Um, what is its purpose? We would want for the prophets to tell us everything because we want to understand the Messiah. But before we ask the prophets for the understanding of the name of the Messiah, let's start with a major source of the confusion. Well, let's go to... Matthew 1 um, verse 21 through 25 that is the first place in the New Testament that we are introduced to the name Jesus and it also happens in that same passage to include the name Emmanuel and so based on the interpretation of those of us who read the Bible and who talk to others about it based on our interpretation a lot of us believe that the name Jesus is in fact the name of the Messiah. But if we take a careful look at it and if we consult the prophets, we can come to the conclusion that it is the name Emmanuel that is the proper name of the Messiah and the name that was given to him um, first through the mouth of our father and then given to him by his um, father Moses, his father Joseph and his mother Mary. And so let's go to Matthew 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name, as it reads, Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now this was all done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the Lord by the prophet saying, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she brought forth her firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. At first glance, it appears that the name Jesus is followed by the meaning of the name. And we know that this is a convention in the Bible. Very often, the first time that we see a name, especially a name of one of the founding fathers of Israel, that name is followed by the meaning of the name. And so a lot of us see when we read, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people, we think that the name Jesus means savior or having to do with salvation. But this is not the case at all. What happened is that um, the name Jesus is a Greco-Roman name. It is a word or a name chosen by the Greeks as their interpretation of the Messiah. It is a name that they believe in their mind best captures all of the qualities, all of the attributes of who the Messiah is. And so the name of the Messiah was translated. Another word, another name was chosen for it. 
it was not transliterated. Most of the names in the Bible are transliterated. What that means is that the name sounds very close to the way that it sounded when it was spoken in the original Hebrew. The difference is we are using the characters of the language that we are writing in to represent the sound of the name in order to reproduce the name. Now, this is well illustrated in Matthew 1 verse 23. It says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And so the interpretation of Emmanuel is God with us. Notice that the name Emmanuel is itself a Hebrew name. It is a transliteration of Emmanuel, of the name Emmanuel. And so it sounds pretty much the way it sounded back then. The accent that I'm giving it might be a lot different, but it sounds very similar. However, when you see the interpretation, it says God with us, which doesn't sound at all like Emmanuel, but that's what it means. Emmanuel is the transliteration. God is with us is the translation in English. Um, for example, if you were to go back in time to ancient Israel, you could walk up to the house of the Messiah and knock on the door and say, Emmanuel. You might sound funny saying it, you might have a deep accent, but whoever opens the door will know who you're talking about. You're talking about Emmanuel, the son of Mary, the son of Joseph, who lives here. Now, if you knock on the same door and you ask for God is with us, they will not understand you because God is with us does not sound like Emmanuel. Likewise, if you ask for Jesus, they will not understand you because Jesus does not sound like Emmanuel. And when you go back to the verse and you look at the word Emmanuel and you look at the words God is with us, what you're looking at is God with us being the individual words that make up the name, the word Emmanuel, M Anu. L, and it means with us God. And so we see that um, the name Emmanuel was translated, a new name was chosen for it. There are many examples of that in the Bible, but if we go to Revelation 9, we see another example. Revelation 9 verse 11, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. And so here again, we see that in the Hebrew tongue, the name of the angel of the bottomless pit is Abaddon or Abaddon. In the Greek tongue, it is Apollyon. They do not sound the same because Abaddon is not being transliterated into Apollyon. A new word was chosen to represent the same thing in the Greek tongue that Abaddon represents in the Hebrew tongue. It is a translation and not an, uh, a transliteration. It is an interpretation. And that's exactly what we find in this passage in Matthew. We find that in the passage, the name of the Messiah, Emmanuel, is given, but also the name that it was interpreted into. The same way that Emmanuel was interpreted to be God is with us, in English, the Greeks interpreted that 
back then as Jesus. That's the name that they chose to say Emmanuel, the name of the Messiah. Now, why is all this important? Well, we know it is important. Um, Acts 4 verse 12 tell us that the name of our Messiah is very important. Acts 4 verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And so the name is important. And um, if the name is Emmanuel, you cannot hope to be saved by calling on to Jesus or by calling on to Timothy or by ca calling on to any other interpretation of the name. It would be best for you to use the name that he was given or a transliteration something that sounds as close to it as you can possibly get using the characters in your own language. In our case, the name is Emmanuel. Now, let's see what our father says. In Psalms 89 verse 34, we read, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Our father said, that he will not alter the thing that has gone out of his lips. And when we go back to the same passage in verse 22, we read, Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the Lord, spoken of the Lord by the prophet. So it was the word of the Lord that was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, in our case, Isaiah, where he wrote, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Our father said, I will not alter the Thing that is gone out of my lips. What came out of his lips is was, was that the child is to be called Emmanuel. And we know that everything, his words always come to pass. Everything he say come to pass, they do not return to him void. And so we can be sure that the child was named Emmanuel. But let's look at the first part of the verse. Um, Psalms 89 verse 34, it begins, my covenant will I not break. What is the covenant? Well, the covenant is best summed up in Genesis 26 verse 24. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night. This is our father. And he was talking to Isaac, the son of Abraham. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. Our father said, Fear not, for I am with thee. Well, that phrase, I am with thee, that word, I am with thee, sums up all of the blessings that we are to receive as his children. It sums up all of the blessings that Israel was to receive as his nation. It includes um, all the blessings that are found in the Bible. It includes the lamb that was promised, and it also includes the kingdom that our father shall establish here on earth for the sake of his children, and it includes his protection. Um, he will protect us. He is with us because he wants us to be safe. And so, the word again that came out of our father's mouth is, I am with thee. That is what he said to 
Isaac. That is what he said to Abraham. And that is what he says over and over and over to his prophets and to his people. Now, we are going to look at what the prophets have to say. We know that the word of our father comes to us through the prophets. And even the Messiah called us fools for not believing all all that the prophets have spoken. Luke 24, verse 25. This is the Messiah. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So the Messiah called us fools 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 for not believing what the prophets have spoken instead most of us believe in what man says believe in man's interpretation of the bible believe in what man says over what the prophet says over the word that came unto the prophets that came directly from our father himself so the messiah called us fools oh fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And then he went through the Bible with his disciples and with, and with everyone who would listen. And he showed them in the Bible all the things concerning himself, beginning with Moses and then with the prophets. And then he probably looked at that same verse that we looked at just now in Genesis 26 verse 24. When our father said, I am with thee. And then he told them, look, my name is Emmanuel. My name means that the Father is with us. And he showed them many other things, all of which came from the prophets. Um, now, how should we approach our study of the prophets? Well, in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 29 and 33, Paul said, let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge let the prophet speak two or three why at least two or three well you need at least two witnesses in almost everything um verse 33 for god is not the author of confusion but of peace our father is not the author of confusion but of peace and so if there is confusion in that passage of matthew that we read earlier then we need to consult the prophets so that it may be cleared up so that there is no longer any confusion in us about the name of the messiah because there is no other name given under heaven for us to be saved and so let's try to eliminate the confusion. And for that, we have to go to the prophets. Let's start with the proper name of the Messiah, who Matthew said would save his people from their sins. And for that, we have to go to the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah's name means Yah has saved. And so the word of the Father that came unto Isaiah was primarily concerned with the salvation of Israel and of the entire world. He therefore spoke extensively um, about the prophet who would one day gather Israel and deliver them to safety as promised by our Creator. He prophesied about the name of the Messiah in Isaiah 1, in Isaiah 7, uh, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. Emmanuel is a Hebrew name found in Hebrew dictionaries. It is not a title. Um, all Hebrew names have a meaning. Abraham means father of a multitude. Um, Judah means giving praise to our father. 
all Hebrew names have a meaning. And likewise, the name of the Messiah, Emmanuel, also has a meaning. If we were to dismiss the name of the Messiah, Emmanuel, as a title, we would have to dismiss Abraham's name as a title, Israel's name as a title, and everybody else's name as titles, because all their names have a meaning too. Um, Jesus, however, again, is a Greco-Roman name. It is not a Hebrew name. Um, and it is doubtful that Mary and Joseph of the house of David, Jews, would give their child, the Messiah, a Greek name. The Messiah had a Hebrew name. But what happened to the name Emmanuel? Um, Peter and John were performing miracles in the name of Emmanuel. Let's find out what happened. Acts 4 verse 17. But that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. It, as it reads, but it's in the name of Emmanuel. Acts 5 verse 28, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Peter and John were threatened not to use the name Emmanuel, but they kept on using it. And they were beaten by the authorities for using the name of Emmanuel. And they considered them luck, themselves lucky to have been beaten for our Messiah. Um, but not everybody else felt the way that Peter and John felt. And so over time, the name, once the Romans took over the gospel and created the Roman Catholic Church, the name was handed down to us through the Greek version of the New Testament, and it, it was, and it became uh, Jesus, the interpretation. Instead of the name for which Paul, not Paul, Peter and John were beaten for, they were beaten for, for using and performing miracles under the name of Emmanuel. But let's study now the name Emmanuel. Let's ask the prophets to see why the Gentiles we're so afraid of the name Emmanuel. Let's look at the name. If we go to Strong's Hebrew um, Dictionary, we'll see that Emmanuel is Strong's Hebrew number 6005. And it reads, with us is God. And if you look at the individual components of the name Emmanuel, those words are in Strong's Hebrew Dictionary as well. Um, word number 5973 is im, which means with. Word number 580 is anu, which means we. And word number 410 is el, which means strength or mighty or power, especially in reference to our creator. Now, Im and Anu are pretty straightforward. Im means with, Anu means we or us, and El is used for God. So Emmanuel means God is with us or with us is God. But let's take a closer look at Strong's Hebrew word number 410. That word is El. And let's read it together and let's see if that will help us gain a better understanding of the name Emmanuel. It says, L, shortened for, from 352. Strength as adjective, mighty, especially the almighty, but used also of any deity. 
God, goodly, great, idol, mighty one, power, strong, compare names in L. Why compare names in L? Most of the Hebrew names that end in L means God something, just like Emmanuel means God is with us. Um, and Israel means prince with God. Um, let's read it again. It says that the word El means strength, but as an adjective, it means mighty. Now, what is an adjective? A word or phrase naming an attribute added to a noun to modify or describe it. Or an adjective is a word or phrase naming an attribute that is grammatically related to a noun to modify or describe it. And so an adjective is something that describes a noun. And in L, in Emmanuel, the L is an adjective that is describing an attribute of our creator. And we see that the adjective is mighty. It is saying that our creator is mighty. Again, in the definition, we see that L means strength as an adjective mighty, like the mighty one. It means might and power to be strong. And so we see that L means mighty. We read again, L, strength, as adjective, mighty, especially the almighty, but used also of any deity, God, goodly, great, idol, mighty one, power, strong, compare names in L. And so L is an epithet of our father. It is that epitaph that refers to our father's attribute of being mighty, of having might, of having strength, of being strong. And so L in the proper sense of the word when talking about our father, when talking about the king of Israel, L means the mighty one. It means mighty. Let us ask the prophets for confirmation. Let's go to Jeremiah 20, verse 11. Jeremiah 20, verse 11. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. The Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. There goes the words, the Lord is with me again. And this time it provides a purpose. This time it tells us why the Lord is with us. The Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. He is with us to be mighty. He is with us to show his strength and his power. Again, let's read the verse. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble. They shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall be never forgotten. From the words of the prophet Jeremiah, we can conclude that the proper definition of Emmanuel should be with us is the mighty one. Because according to the prophet, the Lord is with us as a mighty one. He is with us as a mighty, terrible one. If we now go back to the word Emmanuel, and instead of saying God, we use that attribute of our father that L means mighty, we'll have a better understanding of the word. 
Emmanuel now means with us is the mighty one. The mighty one is with us. The mighty one of Israel is with us. And our father spoke through the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 1 verse 24. He too said that of himself. Isaiah 1 verse 24. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. Our father called himself the mighty one of Israel and then gave his name. Ah, which is a variation of Yah. The mighty one of Israel. Ah. I will ease me of my adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. So our father is the mighty one and he is mighty enough to destroy all of his adversaries and he is mighty enough to get his vengeance on his enemies. And Mary, the mother of Emmanuel, agrees that there is only one who is mighty. That's why the father calls himself the mighty one. In Luke 1 verse 49, Mary chimes in. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. He that is mighty, there is only one who is mighty. Now we know that the L in Emmanuel means the mighty one. But what does it mean for the mighty one to be with you, for God to be with you? Emmanuel means the mighty one is with us. What does that mean? Let's ask Jeremiah the prophet. In Jeremiah 30 verse 11, we read, For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Jeremiah 30 verse 11, For I am with thee, saith the Lord to save thee. So that's one of the things that it means for our Father to be with us. I am with thee to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. I am with thee to save thee. This brings us right back to Matthew. Now we know why Matthew wrote that the Messiah will save his people. His name is Emmanuel because the mighty one is with us to save us. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. God is with us to save us. Let's go back to Matthew 1. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, for he shall save his people from their sins. The mighty one is with us to save us. So call him Emmanuel. Call him the mighty one is with us because he shall save us from our sins. Call him Emmanuel. The mighty one is with us to save us. We now see that the confusion is beginning to clear up. Matthew did his job. When he wrote, he most likely wrote the name Emmanuel. And when you read it again, thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, for he shall save his people. It makes perfect sense. He shall save his people is the purpose of the mighty one being with us. He is with us to save us. And so we see that Emmanuel fits perfectly fine when we insert that in the passage and remove the name that was put in by the Greeks and the Romans later on, Jesus. Again, the ability to save is an attribute of the Messiah because that is the purpose for which he was sent. 
But um, let us continue to hear what some of the other prophets have to say. Zephaniah 3, verse 17. The prophet Zephaniah wrote, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee, is mighty, he will save. Our Father is mighty, he will save. Just like we read in Matthew, call his name, the mighty one is with us because he will save us from our sins. You could be in the hand of kidnappers you could be in the hand of mighty nations or mighty kings you could be sick you could be in a den full of lions the mighty one is with you to save you jeremiah 30 verse 11 for i am with thee saith the lord to save thee let's go to hosea 13 verse 4 yet i am the lord thy god from the land of egypt and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior beside me. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities and thy judges of whom thou saidest? Give me a king and princes. I gave thee a king in my anger and took him away in my wrath. In Hosea, our father wrote, there is no savior beside me. The father alone is our savior. And he gave us his word that the mighty one is with us. His word became flesh and the mighty one is with us became a man and he was set as a prince to save Israel and the rest of the world from their sins and from eternal damnation. Let's go to Acts 5 verse 31. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. The Messiah was sent to be a savior. The mighty one is with us, became flesh. That is the word that became flesh, that became the Messiah. And the purpose of the mighty one is with us, is to save us. The Messiah himself confirms this in Isaiah 63 verse 1. The Messiah is talking and he said, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Our Messiah wrote that he is mighty to save. He is mighty to save because the mighty one is with him. When you go back to Matthew 1 verse 21, call his name Emmanuel for he shall save his people from their sins. Well, you have to be mighty in order to deliver. You have to be mighty in order to save. Consider these two examples where the prophet Daniel this time helps us to understand. Daniel 3 verses 14 through 18. Daniel 3 verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer and all kinds of music 
ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour in the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Out of the hand of the king of Babylon, you have to be mighty to deliver out of the hand of the king of Babylon. Verse 17. Verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And indeed, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were delivered out of the burning fiery furnace. They were delivered out of the furnace because our Father, our Creator, is the Mighty One. And he delivered them with his might, with his strength. Let's go to Daniel 6, verse 20 through 22. Daniel 6, verse 22, verse 20. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lions' mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. And so our father was mighty enough to deliver Daniel from the mouth of the hungry lions as well. He was mighty enough to deliver from the burning furnace and he is mighty enough to save you from lions. He is indeed the mighty one of Israel. Now, and with his strength, with his might, he has promised to save us. He has promised to deliver us out of harm's way, to deliver us into his kingdom. So whether it be that you are in a burning furnace or you are in the burning city of Babylon, whether you are in a lion's den or you are facing the young lion nations of Europe, our Father is the Mighty One. With His might, He can save you from the burning city of Babylon. With His might, He can save you from the hand of the young lion nations of Europe. You have to hearken to His voice. You have to hear the word of our Father that came unto the prophets and seek and have understanding. Jeremiah 1 verse 19, And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Again, you have to be mighty to deliver. Our Father is showing us that he is the mighty one. Again, Matthew 1 verse 23 makes a lot more sense now. Call his name Emmanuel. For he shall save his people. Call his name the Mighty One is with us. Because the Mighty One is with us to save us. One more example. Isaiah 36 verse 18. Beware lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Hath any of the gods of the nations delivered his land? out of the hand of the king of Assyria? 
In Isaiah 36, the king of Assyria is questioning the might of our father. He is questioning the might of the king of Israel. And in Isaiah 37, let's find out what happens. Isaiah 37, verse 33 through 38. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and four score and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch, his God, that Adramalak and Sherazer, his sons, smote him with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Armenia. And Esarhaddon, his son, reigned in his stead. The mighty one of Israel destroyed 180,000 Assyrian soldiers did not even let them reach Judah to disturb Judah. He said they would not enter the city and indeed they did not. With his mighty hand, with his mighty arm, he saved Judah. He delivered Judah out of the hand of the king of Assyria. Our father is mighty to deliver. He is with us to save us. Let's return to the passage in Matthew. Uh, Matthew 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, the mighty one is with us. The naming of the child Emmanuel was the fulfillment of prophecy. And again, Psalms 89 verse 34, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. If the word that came unto the prophet Isaiah is Emmanuel, surely that is the word that stands. It is the word, the name that was given to the Messiah when he came here on earth. Isaiah 55 verse 11. So shall my words be, that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And indeed, the word of our Father, according to Matthew himself, the prophecy was fulfilled, that the child indeed was named Emmanuel, Let's look at the word that came out of the mighty one's mouth, that came unto the prophet Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 7, verses 13 and 14. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. That is the name, that is the word that came out of the father's mouth. Call his name Emmanuel. And sure enough, 
Emmanuel is the name that the child was given. The prophets make it clear that there is only one that is truly mighty and only he can deliver. And he gave us his word, Emmanuel, as a covenant to attest to our father, to confirm that our father will indeed save us. The mighty one is with us, Emmanuel, the word of our father. Now, when we look at the next two verses, we can look at these two verses as the Messiah confirming his name. John 16, verse 32. John 16, verse 32. Behold, the hour cometh, ye is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every one to his own, and shall leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Again, behold the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. The Mighty One is with me. If you're the Messiah, that is your name. The Mighty One is with you. John 8, verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. Again, John 8, verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Our father said, call him Emmanuel. He was called Emmanuel. Uh, Malachi 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Our father does not change. The word that came out of his mouth is that we are to call him Emmanuel. Mary did just that. Why? Because the world needs deliverance. And in these latter days, we find ourselves in great tribulation. And we are happy that the Father has kept his covenant, that the word of our Father does not change. He said he would send the Messiah, and indeed he has sent, sent um, the Messiah in order that we might be saved. Let's go to Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Alas! For that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. This is the day that we are living in right now, the time of Jacob's trouble. But our father is a mighty one. He is mighty to save. Jacob shall be saved out of it. Romans 11, verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. And so the Messiah is the covenant. Emmanuel is the covenant. The mighty one is with us, is the covenant. I am with thee to save thee, to deliver thee from your sins, from eternal damnation, and to establish and set up the kingdom here on earth for you forever. And so, we go to Acts 4, verse 11. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Our Father gave his word, Emmanuel, to the world. The Mighty One is with us to save us. Jeremiah 42 verse 11. For those of us who live in the Neo-Babylonian Empire, the Babylonian Empire of today, Jeremiah 42, verse 11. Be not afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom ye are afraid. Be not afraid of him, saith the Lord, for I am with you, 
to save you and to deliver you from his hand. Matthew 18 verse 11, for the son of man is come to save that which was lost. In Jeremiah, I am with you to save you. The son of man in Matthew comes to save that which was lost. Let's go to Isaiah 8, verses 7 through 10. Isaiah 8, verse 7. Now therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria, and all his glory. And he shall come up over all his channels, and go over all his banks, and he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck. And the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. There is a land of Emmanuel. The stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. So the Messiah has a land. Verse 9. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. That is the word that will stand. The mighty one is with us. So all the nations, all the so-called mighty men, all the so-called mighty kings, all the great empires of the world are welcome to associate themselves. They are welcome to come together in battle against our father in battle against Israel. Let them say the word that they shall destroy us, but their word shall not stand. Speak the word and it shall not stand. For God is with us, for the mighty one of Israel is with us. The mighty one is with us to save us and his word shall stand, his word is Emmanuel. John 3 verse 17. For God set not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The Messiah is sent to do the will of the Father. His name is the Mighty One is with us so that he may save us. Remember, many are called, but few are chosen. Luke 8 verse 12. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So, you don't want to hear the words of the prophets and just put them aside. You need to study the words of the prophets. You need to follow the advice of Abraham, the Messiah, and the Mighty One himself. And hear the prophets. You have to eat the word of our Father so that you may live. And his word came unto the prophets. And those are the people that we have to look to to gain understanding of the name of our father, understanding of the name of his son. Revelation 22 verse 12, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Revelation 22 verse 12, our, the Messiah says that he will come quickly and his reward is with him. Zechariah 8 verse 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men 
shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that the Mighty One is with you. Emmanuel shall be the prince at the head of this great multitude that Zechariah is talking about. All these people who will be looking for a Jew so that they can return to the land, so that they can go into the land of Emmanuel with the Jew that they have found. This great multitude is going to be led by Emmanuel, led by the Messiah. He is the prince that shall gather and lead Israel into safety. There in the land of Emmanuel, our father shall establish the kingdom and there our father shall dwell among men forever. In a way, the promise of the word shall be fully fulfilled at that time. The word became flesh. The mighty one is with us. Emmanuel became flesh, became a man. But when the kingdom is established, the father will be living right here on earth with men. And that day, surely, the mighty one will be with us in the midst of us right here on earth. Ezekiel 48 verse 35. It was round about 18,000 measures and the name of the city from that day shall be the Lord is there. And so the land of Emmanuel New Jerusalem, the daughter of Jerusalem, shall one day be called the Lord is there, Ezekiel 48, 35. The name of the city from that day shall be the Lord is there. That's because the Messiah, Emmanuel, the mighty one is with us, will save us and lead us into the land of Emmanuel. And there our father shall dwell in the midst of us. And there the land will have a new name. And the name shall be the Lord is there. Luke 3 verse 6. And all flesh shall see the salvation of our father. And all flesh shall see the mighty one of Israel, the king of Israel. Our father is going to save us. And even in the days of Isaac, he told Isaac, I am with thee, fear not. And then his word became flesh. I am with thee became the mighty one is with us and his word became flesh, became our Messiah and his job is to gather, deliver and save us and bring us into the land of Emmanuel to await the coming of the kingdom of our father because the kingdom is near to come and therefore all of us um, whose eyes are beginning to open now. All of us have a responsibility to spread the good gospel of our creator, to spread that the kingdom of our father is upon us. It is here. So we have to make our path straight. We have to make a way for our father to come. And so we have to seek understanding. We have to seek wisdom. We also have to seek to understand the name of our father and the name of his son. The name of his son is Emmanuel. It is a Hebrew word that means the mighty one is with us. The mighty one of Israel is with us. And his mission is his purpose is to save us from our sins.
Let's end with Malachi 3, beginning at verse 1. Malachi 3, verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner, and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those who oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. For I am the mighty one of Israel, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Because our father does not change, because our father remembered the covenant that he made to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Our father gave his word to them. He lifted up his hand and he gave them his word. For I am with thee, fear not. He gave his word that he would be with us. And indeed, his word became flesh. His word the mighty one is with us, became flesh. He became Emmanuel, the Messiah. And our Father sent the Messiah to save us. And so, when we consider the passage in Matthew again, when we read it again, we see that there is really no confusion when you reinsert the name of the Messiah in Matthew and in all of the other places in the New Testament where you see the name Jesus. There is no confusion at all when you look at the passage because the passage is an interpretation. In English, that came to us by way of the Greek. It is an interpretation. And so because it is an interpretation, the name Emmanuel was interpreted to be Jesus. And so that interpretation is the name that was used throughout the Bible in the New Testament. But it is an interpretation. It is not a transliteration of the name. It is not the name that the Messiah had when he was here on earth. That name is Emmanuel. And so let's read Matthew again one more time. And this time we will understand it a lot better. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is the mighty one is with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Emmanuel. He called his name Emmanuel, 
because the word of our father became flesh because prophecy was fulfilled. This is Dominic and thank you for watching.